Zion Community Church. Hallelujah. Amen. It's Wednesday. Amen. Seemed like it was Wednesday really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, we thank God that we are here. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our great day today. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for who you are and all that you mean to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings in this day. Father, we invite you into our Bible study time, and we invite you to talk to our hearts. Speak to, speak to each and every one of us. You know our needs. Meet the needs of your people, O oh God. And we thank you. We thank you for making us better. We thank you for creating a hunger and a thirst and a desire for you, for your word. Give us clarity. Allow the power of the Holy Spirit to just move in this place, move over the airwaves, and Lord, accomplish your will for our lives. We thank you, God. Thank you, thank Lord. You. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a mighty, mighty God we serve. Lord, you are good. You are good. And we thank you for your grace that was provided in this day. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. You're worthy to Amen. be praised, oh God. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank, you, Lord. thank you, oh thank God. You, God. Thank hallelujah. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. we thank you for our life, you, our health. We thank you for our strength, soundness of mind. Thank you, God, for mobility. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. We have so much to be thankful thank for. You, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you for fixing what needs to be fixed, oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you God. So, Lord, we just give you this time, and we invite you in to have your perfect way. Yes. Have your perfect have your way, way, God. All those who are suffering yet because they have lost, they have lost loved ones. You. God, you see the storms that have hit the United States. You see the, the tragedies all over, all over, Father. Lord, help the families. Help all of the grieving families, God. Help them, Father. Strengthen them, Father. Make yourself be made known to them. We thank you, God, for you are the God of all comfort. You are the God of peace. Thank you, God. God, you can grin the peace that even our finite minds cannot even comprehend. You're just that good. Yes, Lord. So, God, give your peace. Thank you, Father. Give your peace. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you God, for having mercy upon our world. Have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy, oh God, heal the land. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You know, today we were looking back over what we've been teaching over the last few weeks, dealing with relationships. And one of the things that came to my mind as we dig deeper, and we pray that some of you would um, just open up and communicate back to us today as we teach in this lesson but the bible is a book about relationships mm -hmm. and one of the things as we know is the bible tells us that we should first seek the kingdom of god and its righteousness so the first relationship that's important to mankind is our relationship with god the bible says in john chapter 4 that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth it even says that the lord seeketh such to worship him. And when you deal with the fact that man is a triune being that we're, we are soul, body, and spirit, it is that spiritual connection that we have with God that allows us to enter into a place of worship to magnify God. And it is from that, the seat of that position in our lives that we establish every other relationship. And I think if we get those things out of kilter and God is not the primary relationship, we can expect um, trouble in relationships anyway. But if God is not the first um, place that we seek to establish relationship, we'll find ourselves in trouble because we won't make God's will the priority. We'll try to make relationships that God never it, it wanted us to, to have. And so we need to, to make sure that mentally and spiritually we are preparing ourselves to be in the right relationship with God, number one. That we, we're opening up our heart, you know, that we are, we're experiencing that, that born-again ex experience where we've opened up our hearts to God and said, look, the heart is yours. Mm -hmm. I invite you into my life, 
and but not only into my life to to be in the background, I want you in the foreground. I want you in, in the beginning of everything that's established about me, where I work, I want you to be pleased. Yes. Who I'm in relationship with, I want you to be pleased. You know, um, w- what I eat, how I eat, how I address, you know, um, different people. Because in even how I deal with my enemies, I want God to be a part of how I deal with my body, how I deal with my mind, and what I put in, in, what I allow myself to be entertained by. When we start looking at that, and we make God the priority, and we start saying, you know, as the Word of God says, let's go to John chapter um, 15. John chapter 15, verse 1 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more f- fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples. So when we look at that, because it's going to teach us and go deeper into the place of of love for humanity that stems from first abiding in God. Mm -hmm. Some things we're not going to be able to do properly unless we abide in God. The fruitfulness that's going to come out of our lives in our relationship, our relationship with our children, our relationship with with our friends, our relationship with our enemies, our relationship with our coworkers, our relationship with, with every aspect of nature. It stems from the fact that I know the almighty creator and I want God to be pleased. If a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even his enemies to be at peace with him. So when I start and I, s- I examine myself, Jesus is proclaiming that he's the true vine. When we, when we have that in our mind, and even if we go over a few chapters later in ja- chapter 17, um, when it says, and this is life eternal, to know the only true God and Jesus Christ who he sent. Everything stems around that, that atmosphere of God, I want to please you. I press toward the mark of the high call of God. Sometimes the enemy kind of tricks us into making all these other relationships paramount. And don't get me wrong, God created us. The kingdom of God is about relationship. The Bible is about relationship. But what the first relationship was messed up when man prioritized his relationship with a woman over his relationship with God. Mm-hmm. We know that. We see that because there's no other reason that Adam would take from the woman what God told him not to ex- unless at that moment he lost his mind and was chasing his honey and ate the fruit with her. And how, m- and, and, but we, we should really look at it and see that's kind of common. That we'll pursue relationships with people and make those things pr- paramount to our relationship with God. And, w- you know, we'll even pray and ask God for relationship, ask God for friends. And then when we get what we ask God to give us, we throw God to the side. Put him on the back burner, and we, halt, we, we, you know, we go wholeheartedly into this relationship. And then when the relationship breaks our heart, then we go crying back to God, what happened? Is that somewhere in, in our lives, we've made God uh, a whiff, you know, a cameo appearance. 
You know, only when we get ready to say grace and our prayers and be religious at night do we invite God into situations. And God don't want that. That is not the place of God. We read, we see, first seek the kingdom of God in all of its righteousness. I know I probably quote that verse almost every time I preach. And I can't help it because it is the, the thing that the Bible says supposed to be f first, you know. In, and so, and, and one of the things that God said even about the, ch um, the people in Revelation, he said they have lost their first love. And sometimes we have to, you know, God, you know, I, I'm passionate about you, but, you know, I, I'm sorry. I don't put you on the back burner again. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about it is God knows, and if we love him like we should, he'll remind us, you know, we ain't been talking. You don't love me like you used to. He'll, he'll let you know. And if, you, and if you're sensitive to him and, it's not, and you're not just being religious, because that's what the enemy, the enemy doesn't mind us being religious and going through religious practices where we say the Our Father's Prayer, you know, where we say the prayer, but we're not connected. Yeah. We're not really in the spirit. We say it re redundantly, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, you know. But there's no real, but I guarantee you, I'm, I'm, I want you to try this sometime. If you say, Our Father chart in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth. Just like it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Give me this day my daily bread. Yes. And forgive me of my debts. As I forgive my debt for us. Lead us not into temptation. Mm -hmm. But deliver me from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever. You say that like you mean it, you get saved. <laughs> seriously, seriously, if you go to God with that prayer, God, I'm inviting your kingdom to come. I'm inviting your will to be done because yes. this, this is the relationship. I, I, I don't want to lose my relationship with anybody else, but I'm making up in my mind that today you first. Yeah. And, 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 and it would even help us even in some of the stuff that, that we allow to slip into the forefront of our lives mm -hmm. if we start making our relationship with God first. first. Amen. And as that verse 4 of John 15 says, abide in me and I in you. Sometimes we kind of run over that yeah. one. Mm -hmm. We have to realize as we abide in him, he's abiding in us. He is in us. He is dwelling in us. And we want God to continue to be pleased to dwell in us. So we must understand that abiding, that abiding. And it's continual all the time. And you started off the message talking about how the Bible is really full of instructions of how to handle relationships on all levels. Relationships with finance, relationship with things, relationships with people on different, le on various levels, relationships with our kids, within our families, you know, how to behave on your job. All levels of our life deals with relationship. But God has to be paramount. And he says here, skip down to verse 7, if ye abide in me. And see, it's still a choice every day. Every minute of the day, it's a choice. If we abide in him <coughs> and his word abide in us, then we can ask what we will. And if the word of God is, is richly dwelling within us, we're not going to ask for anything that we shouldn't. Amen. And having the Holy Spirit on the inside gives you that checker. To let you know, oh, no, 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 that's not according to the will. Amen. That Holy Spirit checks our spirit. But if you're full of the word of God, you're going to ask aright. And he says, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Yes. That's relationship. Yes. 
and that's good. And so if I first seek the kingdom of God and I am building my relationship with the Father, and then God opens avenues of relationship this way, this relationship here stays first, and then all the other relationships that come, they're secondary. They're secondary relationships. This relationship with God, my relationship with God, is going to drive all of the other relationships. You know, what? I, I got this crazy picture of those old. See, I need my other mic so I can use both of my hands. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> but it's, it's coming, it's coming. But, but one of the things that, that I thought about is those old Johnny Wisemiller uh, movies where he played Tarzan. Oh, you dirty. Yes. Yeah. So. But, but <laughs> the beauty of it was. Johnny Wisemiller was able to hold on to the vine and uh, grab Eve, uh, I mean, uh, grab Jane, Jane and swing. <laughs> right? But, but he never let go of, of, of the vine or Jane. And then if he did, he found another vine and kept holding and swinging. I think that's really the picture of how our lives should be, that we're holding on to the vine. Yes. And Jesus says, I'm the true vine. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and so if we have that kind of mentality of holding on, that no matter what relationship it, I'm in, I'm connected. I ain't let go of my vine. Because mm -hmm. if, I, if I let go of this vine, it's crocodiles down there waiting on me. Mm -hmm. Right? There's, there's treachery down there, there's rocks, the there, there, there tree limbs, the stuff that I don't want to fall. And I don't want to fall, while, especially while I'm holding on to Jane. Now, and, and, and the funny thing is, I don't remember any of the movies where Tarzan dropped Jane. I, it, it may have happened, but watching from a little boy, I don't remember Tarzan dropping Jane. And so that's the kind of thing that we need to kind of hold on in our spirit, in our mind, is that we're hanging to the vine. And God won't drop us. Yes. He really won't. It may sometimes feel like it, but sometimes it may feel like that because we've dropped him. And when we're talking about relationships, let me throw this out there early. Hanging on to the vine will help you to pick right. Yes. Hanging on to the vine will help you pick that right individual, that right job, that right situation, allowing God to control and then you're listening to God and you're following him. It helps us to pick better. Amen. And sometimes we have what we have because we bad pickers. Right. But we're inviting God in to help us to be good pickers. Amen. Amen. And, and, and even when we go back, if you go back to, to Psalms 91, mm -hmm. you know, he that dwelleth mm -hmm. in the secret place of the most high shall abide. There's that word again. Most high. The shadow of the of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. So so there's a, there's like God is overseeing my whole life, yes. and so I'm trusting Him with my relationship. Even if if God tells me to to do something that I'm uncomfortable with, mm -hmm. I'm comforted by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because I know He will, will He's going to lead and guide me in the all truth, and that's where I need to be if I'm going to worship God. Here's one of the things that sometimes we miss about worship we kind of think of worship as just what we do in church but the truth of it is when you're connected to the vine every aspect of your life is worship yes. even even as you you enjoy doing something that that may be considered silly you're doing it with god in mind mm -hmm. and i think that's where what i want to tie in to to building these relationships and thinking about who God is and what God means to us. And so when you go, when your friends meet you, when you're developing friendship, they know that, that the root of you, mm -hmm. you smell like the vine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You got vine written all over you. What's that, what's that strange fragrance? You know, it's vine of the Lord. <laughs> You know, and, and so so knowing that, you know, so so it's not it's not that God is way back in the back burner of you. The, the vine is wrapped around you. You all called up in vine. You if you really tied into God like you should, everybody's going to see something different about him. Mm -hmm. What is that strange thing wrapped around his head? 
that come, why does he think differently? Why, is he, why does he communicate? I don't hear him saying foul words because I'm connected to, to the vine. And, fruit, and the fruit that's coming out of my mouth is connected to the fruit that I'm, to the, to the branch that I'm in. You know, so when I'm talking, I talk like I'm connected to God. When I send out a text message, it sounds like I'm connected to God. When I post on Facebook, it should sound like I'm connected to God. Somebody said, eh, isn't that boring? God is not boring. People are. Mm -hmm. God, one of the things, and I, and, and I did a post the other day, we should never be bored. And I know that, that's, that, that's, a, that, but Pastor, that's good. never. When you think about how engaging God is and all that he's created, just the beauty of nature itself, going outside and listening to birds and realize the birds singing to the Lord. You know, to, to, to realize that God made the squirrels. God made the blue jays and God made the, the cardinals. All of those things are God made. The little armadillo that's running across the street here and there. The possum. All of those things. The vulture, the, 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 the buzzards that, that are flying over to pick up the, the dead things. That's God's creation. And, and just tuning in, knowing and thinking and worshiping. You made that. The beauty of that kind of connection that you realize that everything that your eyes behold came from the God of all. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those that dwell therein. I heard, I heard a, a, a preacher teaching um, Pastor Gina Tom, Thomason a few weeks ago and she was a, on the radio and she, she said something that stuck with me. She said, stop crying and believe God. I told her, I, I texted her, I said, I, I, I'm probably going to preach a message on that. <laughs> but I did a text message about it to, to, today that we should just stop crying. When you got a relationship with the almighty God, it, it ain't like he, he, he got some power. <laughs> he is the almighty creator of, it would be, be nothing that exists without him. Even somebody that created the carpet that's on the floor, it wouldn't be there unless God created the person that created the design of the carpet. When our eyes behold the beauty of nature, mm -hmm. of, of Utah, that's this playing on the video behind us, when you look at that, God made those things. That in itself, I was like, whoa, God, can I, can I, let me applaud you on that. Man didn't make that. And so, so in itself, when you just start thinking about just the, the, the awesomeness of God, and then you talk to people like you know him. You, you know, we, you know it's, I, I, when people say the man upstairs, I, I, you know, yeah. that's, like, that's like talking about Miss, Mr. Johnson, who stay upstairs, you know. It, I mean, when, we, when you know somebody, that's daddy. You know, that's daddy. You have, you, you communicating with, with, with somebody on a different level. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so, so when we look at it, let's, let's keep going. Let's go back to, to, to um, verse four. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Now that's important. We cannot bear fruit of our own selves. And when you look down at verse eight, herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples. In order for us to give God the glory, to, to, for God to be glorified, we have to abide in that vine so that we can bear fruit. The first commandment that God gave Adam and Eve was be fruitful and multiply. So in my relationships, in your relationships, children, parent, parent, children, siblings, uh, co-workers, um, dealing with your finances, your relationship. How do you handle stuff, things, relationships across the board? We should be fruitful in those relationships. And God wants to make us fruitful in every area of our life. We have a daddy God that doesn't want us lacking 
in any areas of our life. I mean, think about it. The Lord is my shepherd and I what? Shall not want. So sometimes, and I say this quite often, but sometimes the lack comes in not allowing God to be the shepherd. Mm -hmm. uh, many, uh, I won't say all of it, but some of the heartache that we face in life comes from the fact that we ignore the shepherd. Yes. We claim them as shepherd because we like the psalm. It sounds good. My surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I would, you know, you know, you see, we, we say that. But 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 are you really? Mm. Are, have you really allowing God to lead you beside the still waters? And somebody said, what? Because, what, what, again, tying all of this thing, these things to, to all of our relationships. Because sometimes when we have a problem in our relationship, we don't even go talk to God about the relationship and say, I need you to fix the relationship. But I, but I guarantee you, if you bring the relationship to God and you ask God, God, how do you want the relationship to go? God, let the relationship fulfill your purpose. Help me to stay in you. Because in many relationships, the enemy will show up and try to tempt you to get out of the spirit and get in your flesh and you'll jack up the relationship. Because you didn't handle the relationship even when it went wrong the way God told you to. Because sometimes pride get in the way. Mm -hmm. I ain't let nobody talk to me any kind of way. And sometimes when somebody's just saying something, you say, I'm, I got to say something. No. Sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just let a person try to, you know, hang themselves with the word. Mm -hmm. And you just hush. No, no, I need to say something. Sometimes... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sometimes the problem is we don't recognize when God just saying. Because mm -hmm. so, the truth of the matter, sometimes you can't argue with a fool. <laughs> and, and how many of y'all been guilty of trying to correct people that ain't trying to be corrected? Amen. You, 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 you're. <laughs> hallelujah. You're getting frustrated and angry and mad trying to help somebody that ain't listening to you. So sometimes you got to kind of step back and say, okay, God, what you want me to do? He said, don't do nothing. They ain't going to listen to me. They don't listen to me. <laughs> I, God, sometimes God said, you ain't going to get a word in edgewise just like they don't let me get a word in edgewise. That's why so many people are confused. It's because we're not, we don't prioritize our relationship with God. We don't press toward the mark of the high call of God. And what God will do, even in low situations, God will tell you, take the high road. But the enemy is slowly trying to pull you down to the low road. No, God said, no, you wrestle not against flesh and blood. But when you have a relationship with God in this paramount, you're not going to let somebody make you cuss. Why? Because you want you want to please God. And if you feel like cursing them out and you feel like fighting back, your flesh is taking control, then maybe sometimes God is trying to show you you what you need to be worked on. Because sometimes we, we have relationships where people, they irritate us. And I mentioned this before. And sometimes the reason that they irritate us is because there's something in us that needs to be rubbed away. There's something on us that needs to be clipped or cut away. And God sometimes allows that in relationship. It's not that that person is the problem. It's that that person is being used by God in order to make you better, mm -hmm. in order to make us better. If you are struggling because you're a very impatient person, it's somebody that's going to aggravate you to the hilt. They're going to get on your nerves. Why? God is trying to develop your sense of being able to whew, slow your roll, be patient. And so sometimes we have to look at the situation and not always look at the person and we want to attack the person. But we got to look at the problem, look at what's happening. And a lot of times it starts right here. One of the things, that, and we've dealt with this, uh, a subject 
uh, a while back called Seasons for Reasons. Mm -hmm. Seasons, they, they vary in length, you know. And every person that God ordained for us to encounter, we need to make sure we're in the spirit and not in the flesh and acknowledge God. Why did you bring this person into my life? Or, and then also realize that, okay, they were not sent by God. They were sent by the devil. Mm -hmm. But see, if you acknowledge God in all your ways so he can direct your path, some people, God will quick give you a little nudge in your spirit. Ain't no good. Mm -hmm. No, you can't win this one. No. God, I want to get them saved. Not this one. Because they're going to pull you into the world. And sometimes, even I mean, there's some people that you're chasing after, worrying after, trying to get them saved, and the devil using them to get you unsaved. Because mm -hmm. you, you can find yourself worrying about that person, frustrated about that person, that you lose your peace with God. Some, sometimes if you really listen to God, God said, this can't be fixed. What? This can't be fixed. Mm, I can't fix this. Wow. And it's not that God can't. I mean, he can do anything. But the person is so broken and so full of pride that they won't admit that they're broken. Do you know why, why the enemy is so successful at deceiving people? It's because of our pride. The Bible says pride goes before destruction and a halt of spirit before a downfall. That's what pulls a person into false doctrine, into an unhealthy relationship with religion. It is that pride that makes them think that they are so much better than anybody else because of w the way they serve God. Mm -hmm. You can meet people and, and they come off, you know, they, they, they come off like you don't know nothing. They, they kind of have, have that air about them that, that kind of, you know, you say, wait a minute, I don't see any humility in it. And, and the Bible said about Jesus, the common people heard him gladly. And so you have to, we have to make sure that even in our quest for God, we walk humbly with our God. What does the Lord require? Again, going back to our relationship with God. Can two walk together except they, they agree? What does the Lord require? But to love mercy and to do justly and to walk what? Humbly with your God. That means you're, God is the, you're centered in God. And, and even when somebody corrects you, even if it hurts, when you're rebuked, you're able to receive that rebuke. Again, going back to what we said on, on, on Sunday, Galatians chapter 6. If a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. The attitude of, I'm not just trying to show you how much I know, I want to win you. And I don't want to win you for, for my cause. One of the things I, I share with people, look, I'm not just trying to win you to Zion. Mm -hmm. I just want you to be saved. When, when we, if, if, if I'm just sowing, one may sow and another may plant, but it's God that gives the increase, you know. One me water, you know, whatever role you have in sowing a seed into somebody's life, one of the things that I had to learn as a young preacher is everybody that I preached to <laughs> wasn't going to join my church and might not get saved right then. Because my early message, if you didn't want to hear me when I was preaching to you, I ain't think about sowing seeds. I ain't understand that. You're going to hell. You don't get saved right now. Tomorrow I ain't promised to you. You know, you know, I, you know, I mean, I was young. I ain't know any better. So, so, so I start off with love and kindness, and then I start fire and brimstone. <laughs> but then once, as you draw closer to God, you understand that the heart of God, that God's trying to win them, and everybody can't be won just like, you know, just like sometimes the fish get away. But because you are a fisherman, there's a patience in fishing. 
And even when God bless you with a career, a job, you have to see your job, your career, all of it is God's way of putting you in a place, putting you in a position to win some souls. Because that's the Father's heart. God is about people. That's why we, we started off. This book is about relationship. Go ahead. So we want to talk about some things that we should be able to do as God's people if we are ourselves emotionally healthy. And these are some things that we talked about, what, years ago? Years ago. Okay. Um, so one should be, we should be, if you're healthy, you should be able to openly express physical and verbal affection to the satisfaction of, now this deals with your spouse. This deals with husband and wife, okay? In, in a marriage relationship, God wants you to be free with one another, mm -hmm. free to, to express. And so sometimes in relationships, the relationship is not healthy if you feel like you can't be transparent with your, your, your mate, your spouse. Because sometimes you, we can make each other feel very, very um, vulnerable, very uncomfortable if we're not trusting, um, if there's something there, animosity, resentment, something's there, it's going to keep you from being free to really open up and to express yourself. So that's an area that we can work on in our marriage relationships is being able to be emotionally free, to be affectionate. Now that affection can be on different levels, different scales for different people. Everybody's different. Some people are not touchy-feely people, but yet they're very caring. They can be very affectionate. And then we have to learn how to give each other what is truly needed. Right. And not just what you prefer, right. what you like. So having that understanding can help you have a healthier and a better relationship. And sometimes it's the same way with our kids. All of our kids are different. And, and we have to learn, okay, this is what this one needs. This is what that one needs. They, they, I can't treat them the same because that's not what they need. Amen. Amen. And so as the scripture was pointed to in Romans chapter 12, it said, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, honoring to in honor, uh, preferring one another. You know, that's the attitude of putting someone, putting the needs of others before your needs. One of the things that's healthy even in a church is, is that you, you were, um, Submit your role, submit and exalt other people. Uh, I learned this a long time ago, even in, in, I mean, as a teenager in my early 20s. I remember one time I was, uh, I was, I was singing in the choir, and then this guy joined the choir, and he could sing better than me. I told him he could sing the song. Now, I enjoy singing the song, but, the, I mean, he had a better voice, so I just said, go. Go on and let him take take the song. I mean, he's going to take the song to another level. Now, as only God can make give me that kind of attitude because I wanted the choir to sound its best. You know, I enjoy it. But then if he misses Sunday, hey, I'm going to go back singing my song. You know? But 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 that's where the God, God's word tells us to prefer one another. It ain't, why she up there singing my song? One, you ain't write the song. And you, when you auditioned for the song at the time, you was the best person available. But see, we not, we're not wired that way. You know, the, the, the go on, sing, girl, you saying it. You know, but, but, but God wants us to have that kind of attitude. As John said, you know, I must, he may, you know, increase and I'll decrease, you know. But in our culture, we have trouble honoring. Yeah. And it's all about honor, learning how to honor. It says in honor preferring one another. I can't prefer you if I don't honor you. Yes. And so we have that's a word we have to learn even in our culture in the year 2022. Learning how to honor 
one another, preferring one another, honor, and maybe that's a whole nother teaching in itself too, yeah. and the importance of being able to give that respect, even being able to take down. Mm -hmm. We understand that. Sometimes we use that more so than we do honor, but learning how to just give way mm -hmm. to another. It doesn't always have to be me. It doesn't always have to be you. But learning how to let. And, and some of us struggle with it because we like being in charge. You know, we, I mean, I don't want to say control freak, but that's sometimes what some of us are. You know, we, we like control. And if I ain't got control, you know, it ain't going to be done right. You know, it, it because I don't like the way you do it. You know, I, I just don't like my perspective of it from not doing it. <laughs> so. So, but it is, it's part of building relationships, even as husbands and wives. You know, that, I'm going to throw this out there. That's why sometimes people who get married in their, you know, 40s and 50s struggle a little more than people who may get married in their, in the early years. It's because sometimes we're set in our ways and we don't even know we're crazy. <laughs> I, I'm, I probably shouldn't have said that like that. <laughs> But you know what I mean, you know, because because sometimes it's we hard to teach an old dog new tricks, right? You know, and, and, and it takes <laughs> real humility to admit, so it don't have to be done that way, and that ain't the only way it can be done. That it's going to taste good this way, even if I if I try putting this in the potato salad, even though my mama didn't tell me to put it like this, and you know, some things just like that could could take your life to another level. One of the things that even they're talking about um, why I'm, I, I'm hardly ever bored, there's so many different things about God itself that I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. But then there's certain things even about food that I'm learning, different ways of cooking that I'm learning, different experiences of life that, you know, I'm like, wow, I don't live half my life and I ain't never even knew that there was a Wagyu steak. <laughs> what, you know, you know, I, I'm just learning the difference between, you know, prime beef and, you know, and, and, and the different cuts of meat. And I'm just learning this. And I'm yeah, almost you're just learning a different side of the aluminum foil. Yeah. I still ain't quite got that one. Yet. Okay. <laughs> she keeps she keep telling me that, that I think it's a, the, the dull side is the side that the meat's supposed to be on or the food that you're cooking. I keep forgetting. You know, it's luminal four, it's <laughs> luminal four, you just stick it on there, it don't matter what size. Yes, it do, it matters. <laughs> so, but 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 what I what I do sometimes say, okay, tell me again, <laughs> what size should should I line the pan with so that it, you know, so because according to you know, cooking people, it matters. Okay. <laughs> but, so but, but that's true. Yeah, but but see, I have to be humble enough, you know, to even ask when I forget. Because I'm not, I didn't know, right? And sometimes it, it, that's the beauty of love and life is honoring what she's good at. You know, so for years, for years, even when we cooked, I just let her do all the seasoning and I put the smoke and the charcoal on it, right? But she's kind of forcing me to, to start seasoning my own meat. Now, I kind of got mistakes down. I know how to season mistakes. But I still haven't quite gotten down how to season chicken, you know, how to properly, you know, the right amount, you know, for different pieces of meat. But 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 together we're learning and, and we're we're enjoying this part of our lives together. And I'm saying that that's what makes life exciting when you when you're not afraid to keep learning stuff. Mm -hmm. There are so many books that we haven't read. So much information that we don't know. Mm -hmm. So many places that we haven't gone. Mm -hmm. And then that doesn't take away from the fact there's some old movies that's still good. Mm -hmm. Every five years you put on a Star Wars movie, it's like, boy, it's like, I don't even remember that part happening. You know? Some things like that where you, you go back into something that you've seen several times and you look at it again and it's like, Wow. I didn't know that. Okay. Number two, empathize with others 
and focus on their needs and desires. Empathize with others. If you are a healthy, emotional individual, you learn, you learn how to empathize with other people. That's something that's missing too <coughs> in, in our society where people don't care. People do things, say things, they don't care. We still have to learn to care. We still have to learn how to empathize. If your mate can be hurting and it doesn't bother you that they're hurting, something wrong with you. You mean I shouldn't go in there and suck it up? Yeah, like a wimp. It ain't that bad. Well, yeah, that too, but not even caring enough to inquire what's going on. Yeah. You know, you see a person and you know something's different, something's up, you don't even inquire to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's unhealthy in a relationship. And sometimes it's an emotional pain. It's not physical. Mm -hmm. They just going through something and and, and, and and guess what? The other person needs to also this is important. Be honest. I, I just ain't just I'm just a little off mm -hmm. you know that that's that's a part of I think it's going to be a part of the other but but you got to be able to open up and let somebody know let somebody in mm -hmm. you, that's part of being healthy that you ain't so I'm good I'm all right I said I'm all right leave it alone <laughs> and then that's another part of growth is sometimes you have to realize this ain't a good time she ain't she ain't looking for no 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 she don't want me into this one. And men have some men, some, some men, they're fixers. When your wife, friend, tells you stuff, sometimes they're not telling you for you to fix it. They're just telling you for you to listen. Not not to fix it. They're no. Sometimes we're not looking for it for the answer. We already may know the answer, but we just want to get it out. We want to be able to share it. And we want you to be able to understand or at least say, wow, that's hard. Yeah. That's 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 a tough one. That's and then it's even if you don't know what else to say. Yeah. And know? sometimes it's good to say, are you venting? Or looking for a solution? <laughs> and then when and, and then you sometimes you'll get to know this is a venting venting moment. And then other times they're expecting some, some fixing. And, you know, and women, and, and you have to know that men cannot read your mind. They're not mind reading. So, so don't, don't say, well, you ought to know. How can I know? Unless some, some woman share with me what's really going on. I'm clueless. I'm clueless. So, so but that's important that, that we have that kind of conversation. Amen. So we're learning how to listen as well as putting yourself in another person's position. And sometimes we forget that part. Sometimes we don't even care of the position that they're in. Yeah. We just want them fixed so that we could be happy. And that's selfish. <laughs> you know, now, go on, now that you fixed, go on and get me some grits. <laughs> get in that kitchen, woman. Now, I don't know. I'm talking. I ain't talking about me. Huh? <laughs> but see, sometimes th that we do want them to be better so that we can get what we want from them. That's right. That's yeah, right. and that's not that's not empathy. That's not really feeling. I mean, sometimes yeah. your needs need to be tucked way up on. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, sometimes the man looks for the woman to be, um, you know, that really submitted one. If she feels like she's not the mission, there is no submission. Mm, that's, that's she deep. she needs to know <laughs> that she is number one in your eyes, yeah. in your heart. Yeah. That's deep right there. That's yeah. deep. That, that, that's deep. So uh, submission. If she doesn't feel like she's your mission, it's hard to submit. We got to know that, that, that we are top priority. 
under God. Mm-hmm. Under God. Yeah. We got to know we top priority. But when we feel like everybody else is important, and it could be vice versa, mm-hmm. whether man can feel like, I don't get everything more important than me. You know, even the dog, <laughs> even the vacuuming. <laughs> I mean, he's looked at me like that before. Because sometimes I feel he may feel like the clean house takes precedent to him. So we have to watch even being dutiful and doing those right things. But if that other person is feeling neglected, then we got to stop, take a look, and then we got to do some re shaping what's going on amen yeah and this is the you know it's it's amazing how many things that we can cover in this and of course we don't have enough time but the beauty of it is is we're all students of relationships and i shared that i've shared this with people um as a husband i was a student of marriage before we got married Mm -hmm. but then after we got married i started buying books and booking um, um, conferences are going to marriage seminars and stuff because I wanted to be a good husband. You know, I bought, you know, a marriage books. And, I, I, and I, sh- I struggled because I didn't feel like I was the mission. Because he is so easy to get wrapped up, tied up in other people's problems. And he's really quick to help people. But it, in my position, if I feel like that's number uno and it looks more urgent than me, then where does that leave me? So in relationships, you got to make sure that that person is the primary one, the and special one. And, and what goes good with that is, is, is where it's also important even when you deal with your children because mm-hmm. your children can feel like church is more important. And there's a difference, and this is a part of it too. Even church, mm-hmm. when you when you look at church, there are people who neglect their children because I ain't going to no football game. Shoot, this church night, you can't never miss a church service to go support your children. There's something wrong with you. You, you you can't go to a basketball game because you know it, and it ain't like the football season or the basketball season is the whole whole year round. It's just that you know sometimes you need to make sure that they are the priority. And when God is the priority, God teaches us how to balance life. Yeah, and we all get out of balance. We all either go way over here, way, and we need that balance. And God would teach us how to balance our life. That's why I came up with that sermon, and, and I'm, I'm writing, you know, information to, to put together. Um, and I'm going to teach it again. When life gets in the way of life. Mm-hmm. Because at the same time, and I'll just show you this story. At the same time, my wife needed a husband. My children might want daddy. Mm-hmm. Only way I can figure out who going who get m- m- wife is first, but I need God to help me to who do I minister to right now? Because mm-hmm. they both need me. And the same thing, I think that mama could want me to do something, children could want me to do something, wife could want me to do something, and church people could want me to do something. All of them at the same time calling and want different part of me. Mm-hmm. God, what to do? In all thy ways acknowledge him. Mm-hmm. First seek the kingdom of God. What to do? I don't have a clue. Who, who, who need me the most? You know, and, and think about it. And it, it, this might sound crazy, but the wife could be demanding time when the children are on the verge of breaking them, you know, getting into some real trouble. Mm-hmm. You put the children before me. Right now, according to God, the children need me, their their needs right now, even though you are more important to me. But this is one of those situations where I've got to choose doing for the children. And that's why we we all learn how to honor 
and prefer one another. Because the last thing I want to do is neglect her or neglect the children. But I have to keep asking God, what should I be doing right now? And guess what? Guess what? I'm on the list somewhere too. Sometimes all of them need to shut up. And I need to take care of me. Because if I don't, I'm going to be like, what's wrong with him? <laughs> Burnout. You know, because sometimes I just need to chill. Dog might want me to do something. Wife want me to do something. Mama want me to do something. Kids want me to do something. Grandkids want me to do something. And a member on the phone. I ain't answering. And, and the beauty of it, and this is one of the things that has happened, and I love the God about this. My phone could be, I can leave my phone in my briefcase, and it's a Sunday, and I'm, in my mind, I am off. And the Spirit of the Lord will tell me, your phone getting rid of the light. You need to answer it. Because in my mind, I'm off. <laughs> but it, and it's times when I was not going to answer, I sense God saying, it's important. That's the beauty of us worshiping God and making him a priority. We need to close, don't we? Yeah, yeah we, close. we need to close. So we will continue, mm -hmm. Lord's willing, yeah. dealing with relationships. And we want to get to relationships with finances, relationships with things, and people in general across the board. Yeah. Amen. All, even your enemies. We need to know yes. how to handle enemies. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the truth of it, you might not be their enemy, but you might. You know, are you, well, you know what I'm trying to say. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. might not be theirs, but they're they, yours. Yeah. So they they trying to get you. <laughs> you got you need to know how to deal with the people that's trying to get you. Hey, word on the street, y'all be careful out there. You there's some people they gunning for people. We need to spiritually have our head on the swivel. <laughs> this ain't the time to be walking around necessarily with your headphones on. You know, you, you need to put one side in and the other side off so you can hear. That's why I, I, these young, I mean, this is a sad situation. Got all these young men walking around with their britches halfway down there, but you can't run if you need to. Amen. Amen. Okay. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you for talking to us about relationship. And Father, we want to make sure that you are top priority. And as we continue to seek you, God, we ask that you continue to teach us how to have that healthy relationship with you so that we can have a healthy relationship across the board with others. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Help us to understand what's most important. Help us to understand how to, to acknowledge you in everything that we do and how to hear you in making choices and in making decisions. Father, we pray for our families that you would take care of our families. Take care of our children, our loved ones, our spouses, our siblings, God. Take care of our families. Take care of our families. Lord, we know that we are to be prayer warriors. We are to be intercessors for one another. But God, we need you to intervene. We need you, God, to move mightily in our families in our homes, in our communities. God, help our children, help our grandchildren. And Lord, some of our grandchildren are having children. God, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, oh God. Protect the babies. Protect the babies, God. Yes. Oh God, babies are coming, God. Protect the babies. Keep them, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you. Lord, we commit our families to you. And we pray for peace in our homes. Peace in our homes, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless the husbands to love their wives. Bless their wives to respect and honor their husbands. Help us all, God. Help brothers and sisters to get along. The single parents, God, help them. In the mighty name of Jesus, be everything that they need. God, we thank you. We thank you, God. 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 Even those that may live alone, God, help them never to feel alone because you're right there with them. Yes. Give them your peace. Give them your comfort, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, God. 
We thank you for thank being you, our everything. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Just in case you realize you need to commit your life to the Lord, I never want to take it for granted that somebody may have tuned in and they need to cast their cares unto the Lord. And, and sometimes just leading them in a simple prayer of believing God for salvation can make a difference in their lives. Say this with me. Say, Father God, Father God I've heard your word. I've heard your word. And I realize, and I realize the most important relationship, the most important relationship I, should ever have that I should ever have is with you, Father God. With you, Father. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of all my sin. All my transgressions. All my I'm truly, sorry. I'm truly sorry. I believe, I believe that, Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Son of God that, he shed his blood that he shed his blood on Calvary's cross. On Calvary's cross. I believe he was dead and buried and was raised from the dead on the third day with all power. Jesus, come into my heart. Save my soul. Change my mind. Bless me to fulfill my purpose. And glorify, you. and glorify you. Fill me with the power, fill me with the power of, the Ghost, of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Thank, you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the, Thank you for the, anointing, you for the anointing to live holy, to live holy in an unholy, unholy world. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for tuning in. God hey, and for you. those of you have, who haven't subscribed, um, on YouTube, maybe you just watch us on Facebook. We really would love for you to just visit our YouTube channel and, um, and, 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 and tune in and subscribe so that our numbers will go out and we will be able to reach more and more people throughout the nation, throughout the world.